Hi there, everyone. My name is Prerag Juthani. I'm a third-year internal medicine resident at Stanford, uh, and I make a lot of videos about medicine and business. The reason why today's video is more on the medicine side is because it's all about Helicobacter pylori management. This is part of the Intern 101 series. I have a huge series of videos that are intended to help individuals starting medicine understand and treat common diseases such as H. pylori. So this is intended to be the fundamentals of H. pylori management for interns, first year residents, uh, and also medical students. Even if you're a pre-med student, I think you can benefit from this because you can see the fundamentals of what it's like to practice medicine. Obviously, the reason why Stanford is on this is because I presented this presentation to a morning report at Stanford. Everything I say, however, is based on my own research and do not represent the views of Stanford medicine, of course. With that being said, I want to start with the background on what is H. pylori. H. pylori is a bacterium. It's a gram-negative bacterium specifically, which means it does not have a peptidoglycan cell wall. And it often has an enzyme called urease. That's often what breaks down urea into ammonia and carbon dioxide. Because of the presence of urease, we can use a urease breath test to diagnose H. pylori. However, the best way to diagnose H. pylori is actually with a stool antigen test. That means you actually check a patient's stool for an antigen that relates directly to H. pylori. This test is very sensitive and very specific. That, all, that means that if it's positive, you can be pretty sure that you have H. pylori, and if it's negative, you can also be pretty sure that you don't have H. pylori. Very few tests have such high sensitivity and specificity, but the, um, but the stool antigen test for H. pylori does, so that's why it's such a gold standard test. The high sensitivity and specificity is also why you can often repeat the test after you have treated H. pylori down the road. And one month after you've treated H. pylori in a patient, make sure that it's negative. Because if it's not negative, that means you probably still have the infection. Sometimes people often use biopsy as a way to test for H. pylori as well. That is often off that is often very sensitive and specific as well, but it's actually not sometimes as good as the stool antigen, and that's because people often don't biopsy in the right place. You usually want to biopsy at the intersection of the antrum and the body of the stomach to ultimately make sure that you have the true H. pylori region, and you should be able to see H. pylori organisms on the pathology slide. I will tell you that sometimes there is an antibody test for H. pylori. This antibody test indicates whether or not the patient has been exposed to H. pylori, but it does not tell you anything about if the patient is actually actively infected with H. pylori. The antibody being present just tells you that the patient has H. pylori in the past or may have it right now, but it does not delineate between acute and chronic infection. All right, so that's the background of H. pylori. The other thing I want to tell you is just some high yield tips that individuals, including medical students, may need to know for board exams. One of the most common signs of H. pylori infection includes duodenal ulcers, which are ulcers in the duodenum. And the reason for this is because the urease often creates a more alkaline pH in the stomach, which means the more alkaline uh, substance, the more alkaline substance ultimately leads to coming into the, when it comes into the duodenum, leads to less bicarbonate being secreted, which ultimately makes the duodenum more prone to getting ulcers because it's a little bit more acidotic. Okay. Chronic H. pylori infection is also associated with gastric malignancy, such as gastric cancer and lymphoid cancers. And this is why treating H. pylori is so important, because if you don't treat it and you have chronic infection, you are actually at very high risk for malignancy down the road. There are a lot of organizations that tell us how to treat H. pylori, and today I'm going to go over the guidelines from the American College of Gastroenterology. This is the source for this video. Uh, they last issued guidelines on how to treat H. pylori in 2017. There are now new guidelines as of 2024. And the reason for this is because there are increasing resistant strains of H. pylori. There are also brand new drugs on the market that I want to talk to you all about, and I think it will be really good to know. So here is a lovely slide that was from the paper I read. You'll see that the H. pylori antibiotic resistance rates in the U.S. are spiking up really quite a bit. Specifically, clarithromycin. Around 31.5% of strains are resistant to clarithromycin, and about 37.6% of strains of H. pylori are resistant to levofloxacin. Both of these are drugs that were previously recommended to treat H. pylori, but because of these increasing resistance rates, you'll see that they're changing the official guidelines on what ultimately we should use to treat H. pylori. Here's a few more things. The rising rates of resistance are actually one of the biggest things that plague a lot of medicine right now, but you're seeing this actually play out in the realm of H. pylori. 
before we used to use clarithromycin to treat H. pylori. H. pylori is a very intense bug that thrives in acidic environments. And for this reason, we often need multiple antibiotics to get rid of it. And we often also start patients on a PPI. Now that we have increasing, suscept- increasing resistance rates to clarithromycin and levofloxacin, the brand new guidelines suggest that we don't utilize these medications. So what do they recommend? Well, ultimately in 2017, they had recommended this regimen, clarithromycin, a proton pump inhibitor, amoxicillin, or metronidazole, okay? However, they also had recommended at the time bismuth quadruple therapy if you were worried about um, clarithromycin resistance. However, now in 2024, clarithromycin resistance is just so high that essentially the preferred regimen is a 14-day course of bismuth, which is a direct uh, obviously, it's an element uh, on the periodic table, but it's a, it has direct antibacterial effects against H. pylori. Metronidazole, uh, which is helps get rid of the bacteria through the generation of free radicals, but it's also an antibiotics. There's tetracyclines and PPI. So now the new regimen to treat H. pylori should be the bismuth quadruple therapy, which consists of bismuth, metronidazole, tetracyclines, and a proton pump inhibitor. Those four drugs, as of 2024, need to be taken for 14 days to treat H. pylori. So if you have a positive stool antigen, you, you can diagnose your patient with H. pylori. You need to give these four drugs for 14 days. And then after one month, you need to test to make sure that they should has cleared the infection by doing another stool antigen test, okay? With that being said, here are some more guidelines. I'm not going to go too much into them, but you can kind of see here that in 2017, there was this thought that clarithromycin could be helpful, but now we should be focused primarily on bismuth quadruple therapy. There are some other regimens, however, that I want to talk about. Specifically, there is a brand new drug on the market called a potassium channel blocker. This is a brand new drug. It's going to cost a lot of money, but if you can afford it, and if patients can afford it, you can take this new potassium channel blocker with amoxicillin as a way to treat H. pylori for 14 days. Here's a bit about that drug. I say this because it's always good to know what's on the front lines, the things that are changing. This drug is called vonoprazin. I'm not the best at pronouncing it. Uh, It's US FDA approved to treat H. pylori. It's also US FDA approved to treat erosive esophagitis, but not gastroesophageal reflux disease. And the way this works is that it directly inhibits uh, the potassium channel here. Okay, it's actually much better than a PPI. It works for much longer periods of time and the studies have shown that it's very, very good. But the problem is it costs around $700 monthly. But I'm hoping as prices go down, as this becomes a bit more common, hopefully this can change the game because you can just use this with amoxicillin to treat H. pylori as well and don't necessarily have to rely on bismuth quadruple therapy. That's four pills, which can be very tough for patients to take. All right, so let's just recap what we went over. This whole uh, presentation was about diagnosing H. pylori, which we do with the stool antigen test, right? Uh, how to treat H. pylori, which we went over. Ultimately, we want to make sure we treat it with a quadruple therapy regimen here for 14 days. We want to make sure we then check for a test of cure by checking the stool antigen and making sure it's negative. And if you want to impress your friends, just know that there's a brand new drug out there that can also help treat H. pylori, all about potassium channel blockade. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like, comment, share, subscribe. It really means a lot to me, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.